Welcome to the Vision by Protivity interview. I'm Joe Kornick, Editor-in-Chief of Vision by Protivity, our global content resource looking into the future to examine big themes that will impact the C-suite and executive boardrooms worldwide. Today, we're exploring the future of ESG and its strategic implications for people, process, and the planet. And I'm thrilled to welcome Allison Taylor to the program. Allison is an adjunct professor at NYU's Stern School of Business and executive director at Ethical Systems, which is helping companies build more ethical and effective cultures through a more holistic approach to the future of corporate integrity. Allison is also currently an advisor at BSR, Business for Social Responsibility, a global sustainability business network and consultancy where she works with companies on strategy and business development. She is an expert on ethics, sustainable business, political and social risk, human rights, corporate governance, and stakeholder capitalism. Allison, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me. Super fun to be here. So, Allison, let's start with ESG. Um, I've been doing a lot of, you know, a lot of interviewing and I've had a lot of conversations um, for this particular theme that we're working on, the future of ESG. Um, and I'm discovering that ESG actually means many different things to different people. So I'll start there. What does ESG mean to you? What's your definition? Yeah, so I, I um, will start just by saying it is like that. It's a bit like the blind men and the elephant and everybody sees it in a slightly different way. The way that I would describe and define ESG is it is the financialization of sustainability. So sustainability or corporate responsibility, that's a very, very old movement, really centuries old. But um, there was a lot going on in the late 90s with people being very concerned about um, slave labor in factories and deforestation and that kind of thing. So there's a long running responsible business movement. And ESG is what happens happens when financial services and investors get hold of that and they try to translate it into financial data and financial results. Can you tell us a little bit about your role at Ethical Systems? Yeah, absolutely. So I've been with Ethical Systems since the end of 2019. It's a sort of research collaboration or maybe a think tank. Uh, we're based at NYU Stern School of Business and we're trying to help companies build more ethical and effective organizations and particularly organizational cultures. And more specifically, what we're trying to do is to get the best ideas from academia and bring them into business. There is a lot of really amazing uh, research being done on responsible business, on ESG, on ethics and compliance, and the business community a lot of the time just ignores it. So I think of myself really as a translator. I'm trying to get the best ideas out of the brains of professionals professors and, and explain them to business people in a way that is practical and useful and makes sense. Um, and then really, uh, by doing that, try and advance innovation and, and get people to think in, in a bit more of a fresh, different way about what they're doing. Yeah, interesting. So how do you think we're doing in general? How would you say companies are doing these days when it comes to, you know, not only sustainability and ESG, but integrity and, and ethics? Uh, which I think is 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 a big topic and will be going forward. Sure. So, I mean, I certainly think every business out there has noticed that something big is going on, right? So, um, and I, I think we can kind of see this everywhere. There's a million examples, more than we could cover on this uh, recording. But it used to be back in the 20th century and in the Milton Friedman era that as long as you didn't break the law, anything you did to maximize profit and shareholder value was at least ethically neutral. You could say you were a good business as long as you weren't doing anything illegal. Now, if I give my students a discussion question on business ethics, they're quite likely to go away and talk about climate change or human rights or something like that. So our notion of what a good and ethical business is and needs to do has completely changed. Everybody's noticed that because it would be hard to miss, whether you're looking at kind of Disney in Florida or the Paris Climate Agreement or all the kind of culture war stuff or the employee pressure, um, all the kind of revelations about human rights abuses in supply chains, the Xinjiang forced labor law that just passed. I mean, there's a huge amount going on. And what I think is going on is that business leaders are feeling completely overwhelmed they have no idea what to do about these things. 
very often there isn't someone whose job it is to deal with these things. These things sit somewhere in between compliance and sustainability and corporate affairs and government relations and risk. Um, and so at the moment, I think it's just a real struggle to figure out how to respond. You don't want to say, well, we don't care about any of these concerns. We're just going to focus on shareholder value. But on the other hand, you don't want to sort of suggest or claim that you're solving problems you can't solve. So I think companies are really kind of caught in the middle between a rock and a hard place, trying to figure out what to say and what to do and how to tie things to their strategy and then how to respond to all this pressure. And I think where it often ends up is a sort of governance by Twitter, where you've got someone in the marketing department saying, well, someone's yelling at you about this today and companies kind of pivot and try and try and respond as quickly as possible um and and one of the biggest problems i think is that there's so much bad advice out there and so a lot of the debate also kind of falls into this idea of some people saying well this is all nonsense and you can ignore it and other people saying no it is your job to solve climate change and human rights and inequality and democracy and there's not really a sensible middle path forward so that's where i would say we are at the moment yeah that's interesting I have a, a couple of thoughts. I mean, one, you mentioned Twitter, and I think that's a really interesting point because I do think Twitter has forced executives to, you know, to make a stand or to feel like they need to make a stand um, on several of the social issues, right? They're not they're not all going to be as easy as, as you know, Russia, Ukraine. There's going to be some, some a lot more gray areas as we go forward. Do you think that companies will or executives will need to make more take more stands, take more positions, you know, take a side? Uh, and should they? I mean, would your advice be that they should or should they try to steer clear as much as possible? Well, it's such a good question. I have to say I'm a bit of a skeptic about companies taking a stand because I think a lot of it is really um, PR. And so there's been again, and I, I hate to sound like such a historian, but you know, before about 2014, it used to be that a business would say, I am neutral. I don't get involved in controversial issues. I don't take positions. Republicans buy sneakers too, whatever it is. You know, I don't get involved in politics. It's got nothing to do with me. But always beneath the surface, that's never been true. Companies spend money, they usually spend money on either side of the aisle, they lobby, they try and get things done in their own interests. So I think what's happening now is not so much, um, well, one, businesses have been forced to take a stand, but then what that's done in turn is make employees and other stakeholders and everyone else be like, well, hang on a minute, you're saying one thing, but what, how, what are you doing really beneath the surface? Do you mean it? Are you greenwashing? Are you spending money that undermines your position? So I don't think there's a problem with a company taking a stand if it's been really, really thoughtful about it. But I think it's very, very dangerous to take a stand and treat this like it's just messaging because now what you've got is kind of armies of employees investigating and trying to figure out if you really mean what you say. So it's okay to take a stand, but make sure you've got your ducks in a row internally. Make sure you can talk um, about what your business is actually doing about the issue. So don't just kind of talk about something that's got nothing to do with your business um, to have an effect. We are, as you have d doubtless noticed, uh, uh, very, very polarized in this country at the moment. Um, it, you know, Republicans and Democrats have always disagreed, but now um, there's been a big rise in what, what we call effective polarization, which means we don't just disagree with the other side, we think the other side is evil and stupid. You can kind of see surveys where people are quite happy for their children to marry someone from a different religion, but marry someone from a different political party, no way. So we're in this really, really dangerous situation. And, and I certainly don't think it's business's uh, role to save democracy, but I do think business needs to be very, very, very careful about the kind of backlash and the kind of turmoil that you have seen going on with some very high profile companies recently. Right, right. Let's stick with business leaders then, if we could. You, you had mentioned them earlier. You think they're really struggling. They've just been inundated with all of this, you know, all this information. I mean, ESG has become a real front burner issue for, for all of them. Um, so when it comes to, to ESG and, and specifically ethics, you know, 
Um, what would be your sort of advice for business leaders? How can we make sure, you know, what, what steps could they be taking to make sure they get this right? Yeah, I would have a really a one word answer that, that I'll expand. And my one word answer is focus. So I think there's a sort of confusing aspect of ESG, which is that because a lot of it is driven by investors, what investors want is a bunch of ESG ratings. So what they want is for the company to disclose information on 30, 40, 50, 100 issues. And then the investors can look at that data, they can put the company in a portfolio of companies, and they can use it to make more money. So none of that, I mean, I'm not saying there's a problem with transparency, but I don't think like, what can I do to get a better ESG score is a good way to run your strategy because you will end up completely overwhelmed. And realistically, a business cannot be ambitious and cannot be doing a good job um, on 30 or 40 issues. So the advice I give when I consult to companies on this topic is pick ideally one issue, but definitely no more than three that is genuinely relevant to your business, where you can genuinely get something done and is genuinely also relevant to your stakeholders and focus on that issue. Do something ambitious, do something strategic, partner with NGOs, make sure that's your message on everything else. Just be aligned with your peers, but don't try and solve world poverty. Just, just work on the things that your business can do and try and do that properly. Because the alternative, I think, is that this is just treated as PR and you end up with a team that spends all year writing the report and gathering the data and doesn't do anything about the problem. So I'd much rather see companies focus on one really important thing. And I, I read an article in the Wall Street Journal a couple of weeks ago, um, and the former chairman of Aetna said at the end of this article, running a business is now table stakes. And I thought that was a pretty terrifying comment because running a business has probably never been so difficult. And so I would really like the people running businesses to focus on running the business and not on saving the world where we have other institutions, at least in theory, that whose job it is to do that. Right. No, that's interesting. And you know, you mentioned you mentioned focus and staying, you know, focused on one or two. I mean, do you have any suggestions or any thoughts about which may be the most important? I mean, I'm sure it varies by business or by geo, but do you are there are there some that have risen to the top in terms of their import um, for business leaders to focus on? I think everybody is concerned about climate change, obviously, or all young people at least are concerned about climate change. And the other thing I think that we've seen since the pandemic is there's now a very big focus, right, on good jobs, a living wage, healthcare, things like that. Um, there's actually, you know, we're starting to see the rise of unions again. So I think, um, you know, I think those two topics are really, really important. But otherwise, you're right, it varies a lot by industry. So if if you're an oil and gas company, you've got an obligation to do something about climate change. If you're a pharmaceutical company, you need to be looking at drug access and pricing. If you're a social media platform, you need to be looking at the social impact of tech. So um, companies would rather not focus on those problems because they're core to their business model and they're really difficult problems. But if you want trust and credibility and to be ethical, you've really got to do something about the things that are core to your business model. And the good news is that that um, actually also will be will result in programs that are relevant to your business not just you speaking up on some random thing that's that's got nothing to do with you um, and, and kind of to, just to go back to that speaking up point for one second, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm making this sound easier than it is because those issues around kind of race and gender and things like that obviously are relevant to all companies and they need to think about what they're going to kind of say or do if there's a lot of employee pressure. But um, I, I certainly think you can be thoughtful about that. But I, I really, really keep going back to this point and everything that happens out there in the ESG world just reinforces this for me. You will be most likely to be successful if you are very focused about what you're trying to do and are honest and clear about that but you don't over promise you don't make promises you can't keep i think that's very very dangerous today so you know it seems to me that that often ethics gets maybe overlooked a little bit when we talk about esg or corporate responsibility um you know i think it's going to be as as you know you mentioned earlier i think it's going to be hugely important over the next decade um, one is, is that a, is that a fair statement and accurate? And two, where do you think it could have the most impact for companies when, when they think about, uh, ethics and integrity and, and 
their position uh, on on you know on those things going forward yeah so uh, again a really great question a really sort of big question so i'll try and be brief but one of the really interesting things about this is that uh, what you've seen and this started in around the, the late 1980s we've seen an ethics and compliance function grow up on one side and then we've seen this sustainability or now esg grow up on the other side and in fact, those two departments haven't really had much to do with each other until now. So we've had this view that ethics is about the law. We've discussed that already. And ESG is about the voluntary things you do to make the world better. But of course, the voluntary things you do to make the world better are also based on ethical viewpoints. People are upset about climate change and inequality because they're perceived to be ethical issues. So, um, so I think that, you know, I think that it is completely wrong to say ESG has nothing to do with ethics, but it really comes from this idea that there are two different lines of thinking and that ethics is only about the law. So what I think we're now seeing, and I, I wrote a paper for the World Economic Forum about this with some colleagues, is you're starting to see the rise of, we called it the chief integrity officer, but what we're starting to see is a more kind of expanded integrity role. In the US, at least, that takes the, the kind of form of the compliance team very often taking over ESG. Um, and so I think that can be bad if ESG is just seen as another disclosure and set of regulations. But I think for the right business leader to start to take a role that's more strategic, that thinks about what are our commitments going to be? What laws are we going to make? What position are we going to take globally? Can we operate in this market? Should we pull out of China? Should we pull out of Russia? You need a senior executive thinking about those challenges and they cut across ethics and compliance and ESG. So what I hope is going to happen is a more strategic approach to ethics over the long term. Interesting. Uh, thank you so much. So last question from me. Thank you, Allison. You've been very generous with your time. Um, we call this program Vision by Protivity because we want people to give us their vision of the future. We want to bring smart people to the table and have them tell us about where we're headed. So when you look out a decade or more, um, what do you sort of envision for this space? <laughs> it's probably, I mean, probably a question of what I think might happen and what I hope will happen. But um, certainly what I hope will happen is that companies will um, have a really big mindset shift and understand that a company is not just a self-interested entity and you've got to protect the value at all costs. It's a system. A company in real life is an or is it's a social system and it interacts with the, the environment, with other social systems, with political systems, and it relies on those systems, it relies on those stakeholders for success. So you can't really make money over the long term unless you cooperate with your customers, with your suppliers, with your employees. Employees. And so I would I would hope we would move towards a model of business that's more cooperative, more collaborative, that understands that you have a fundamental responsibility not to make the planet worse, and then has a very different sort of leadership that's more democratic, that's more about network building, more about listening, more about emotional intelligence. And I think then I might be onto something here because there's been a recent study showing that job descriptions for C-suite executives have really changed over the last 17 years and it used to be that what we wanted was just operational or financial experience and really the ability to kind of bark orders from the top and now what job descriptions are looking for is exactly what I described so more empathy more emotional intelligence more network building so I hope that in 10 years we'll have this new generation of leaders that really thinks differently about how you run a business and how you succeed in society. And we'll have employees that want to support that and we'll have a little bit less turmoil and a little bit more focus and a lot more responsibility. Bring it on. That sounds like the kind of world that we could all, you know, we'd all be happier with, I think. I think so. Alison, thank you so much again for your time today. We really appreciate, uh, we really appreciate it. And thank you for watching the Vision by Protivity interview. Um, I'm Joe Kornick. We'll see you next time.